But there's some pretty big news. There's a brand new published paper and it proposes using the anomaly dewormers, ivermectin, panicure for cancer. <laughs> Are you looking to learn more about natural pet health and wellness? You've come to the right place. Click the link to subscribe to Veterinary Secrets. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click up there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. This paper was recently published in the Journal of Orthomolecular Medicine, targeting mitochondrial stem cell connection in cancer a new hybrid orthomolecular protocol. There are four main theories that are proposed for the origin of cancer. There's the metabolic theory, somatic mutation theory, the cancer cell stem theory, and the tissue organization theory. A new concept was recently introduced. It's combining the metabolic theory and the cancer cell stem theory. This new theory suggests that cancer arises from impaired oxidative phosphorylation. This new theory is focusing on the stem cells and it's also focusing on the metabolic pathways. They're proposing that there's impaired oxidative phosphorylation. This is leading to cancer stem cells, and this is leading to cancer. So what these researchers have done is they combine two well-established theories. Number one, the cancer stem cell theory. Number two, the metabolic theory. And then they're focusing on specific treatments that could target that. Like what are things that potentially interrupt either of these patterns? and ultimately help us treat cancer in our dogs, cats, even people. So when you think about it, what they're doing, they're looking at what are the most likely underlying causes of cancer? Like where does it start in the first place? And what can we give like to target or interrupt that process way early on, as opposed to something cytotoxic that's going to kill a, you know, a rapidly mutating cancer cell. And we're talking about the metabolic theory in particular, we're focusing on those things which are producing energy, i.e. the mitochondria. What the researchers have found is that there's a big, clear, strong connection between number one, cancerous stem cells and how they get their energy, i.e. via the mitochondria. So what they're looking at is two different types of treatments. They're going to target both of those. They're going to target this abnormal stem cell production, i.e. whatever leads to cancerous stem cells. And secondarily, what's going wrong with energy metabolism, i.e. the mitochondria. We can target them both. Maybe we can target the underlying cause of cancer, really make a big difference in helping your dog or cat. Then based on a review of the literature, they then suggested a specific treatment protocol. The treatment protocols are focused on people, so it's not necessarily as specific to our dogs and cats, but there's two or three big treatments which are completely safe and now well used in our pets, which are totally applicable. And those are the ones we're gonna cover. Number one, they suggest this pretty benign mineral, zinc. When it's given at appropriate doses, they say at one mg per kilo, it's safe for all cancer patients. I personally used it to help speed up bone healing. I fractured my collarbone. I think zinc made a really big difference. So I think there's a whole bunch of things that we're not appreciating from this you know, pretty common mineral. But seeing it as a protocol within cancer patients, I think it's a good idea to incorporate in with your dog or cat. We're looking at doses of one milligram per kilo. Tula is 22 pounds, meaning she is 10 kilos. 10 times one is 10 milligrams. She'll be getting 10 milligrams once a day. And these here, they are 50 milligram tablets. So I would just kind of about fifth them up, give her one fifth of a tablet. Number two, they're suggesting a ketogenic diet. This would mean a diet for your dog that is high in fat, high in protein, minimal to no carbohydrate. Some of the specific veterinary diets out there now, specifically for diabetes, they're actually the ketogenic diet. But you can make your own ketogenic diet where number one, you're eliminating the carbohydrate. Number two, you're starting out with a good quality animal protein, something cleanish, preferably something like chicken. Then number three, you're adding in substantial fat. And a great way to do that is with this MCT oil. We're dosing it at one teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight. Ideally, you can get that to twice a day. Start really low at about a quarter of that dose. Make sure your dog doesn't get diarrhea. So it's the MCT oil, which can actually produce a moderate ketogenic diet then target or interrupting that cancer where it's originating in the first place. The third thing they recommend, which, you know, it's funny, I'd never normally suggest this in a video, but it seems kind of common sense, moderate physical exercise. 
they're suggesting for people, you know, minimal three times a week. You want to be able to increase your heart rate, increase breathing rate or respiratory rate. So this is moderate exercise. Likewise, maybe try to apply that to your own dog if he happens to have cancer or he's still going out, maybe getting him to chase the ball. You're going to elevate his heart rate, elevate his breathing rate. And in doing so, you can then potentially modify some of those ongoing metabolic pathways, which are leading to cancer. And it's such a simple, easy thing to do. So many huge benefits from exercise, one of it being helping treat cancer. But the most important part of these protocols the dewormers. Number four, this is Panicure, the name of the drug, Fenbendazole. It's a very common animal dewormer, been around for years, probably 50 years. I've discussed it a bunch for cancer. It's just kind of exciting to see it actually in a published journal. Like, huh, it's starting to get taken seriously. And explain it how it works. Uh, the researchers are proposing that the Panicure, the Fenbendazole, is actually causing mitochondrial injury in the cancer cells. One of the mitochondria, that's kind of the energy source for these cells, for the cancer cells. The mitochondria, they're going to die and that's how it's actually causing cancer cell death or apoptosis. It's not just that mechanism, they know panic here, it's a microtubule destabilizer. It's actually wreck the cell walls of the cancer cells, you can cause cancer cell death. It also seems to inhibit angiogenesis, that's new blood vessel growth and that's often how the cancer cells spread. So it's working in multiple different ways, but in particular being beneficial in this situation because actually actually targeting the mitochondria causing the cancer cells to die. To date, there's no yet officially published doses of Panicure for cancer in our animals, but based on the animal deworming dose of 50 mg per kilo, there's kind of a general accepted regimen that some people are following. And so what they're suggesting is we're going to be dosing our dogs, dosing our cats at 50 mg per kilo, three days on, four days off. So Tula, the 22 pound dog, she weighs 10 kilos. 50 times 10, that is 500 milligrams. Of this liquid panicure here, each mil or one cc is 100 milligrams. She'd be getting five mils. Five mils for three days on, four days off. I do that for a month and then assess, is it helping her or not? Then number five, Ibamec ivermectin. There's been a bunch of papers out fairly recently looking at the anti-cancer properties of ivermectin. What they've seen and when they start to look at how could this actually be working, they're seeing they can actually do induce apoptosis or cancer cell death. It can induce autophagy and that's where actually getting the body's own cells to eat those cancer cells. They're saying in part the way it works in terms of causing cancer cell death or apoptosis doing a thing called mitochondrial mediation meaning once again it's targeting those mitochondria the energy supply and that's what the cancer cells need to survive and grow targets that guess what they don't get their energy the cancer cells die Avimac, it's been well used in animals been used in for years in dogs cats sheep horses pigs etc etc there is a little bit of a caveat in terms of some animals some dogs in particular they lack a gene called mdr1 called mdr1 gene deficiency and they can't tolerate very high levels of ivamec so specifically these are the herding breeds the australian shepherds so if you have to happen to a dog that is a herding breed before you start any type of ivamec regimen first talk to your veterinarian but assuming you have a dog like tula a little standard poodle cross who knows what yeah. virtually no risk for her to have any mdr1 gene deficiency she could tolerate Ivamec fine. Pretty standard dog and cat dose is 0.2 milligrams per kilo. Tula once again, 22 pounds, 10 kilos, 0.2 times 10 gives you 2 milligrams. This is the injectable Ivermec. Each 1 mil or 1 cc is 10 milligrams. So she would need 2 milligrams, which is this amount here, 0.2 of a cc. As far as the cancer regimen, I suggest once daily dosing. You know, she'd be too will be getting that 0.2 minks per kilo, which is the 0.2 of a cc's. I do that for 30 days and this sass. Am I seeing an improvement? Is it helping her or not? Thanks so much for watching this edition of Energy Secrets. I just think it's pretty cool to finally see a published paper talking about animal dewormers, Benbendazole or Panicure, Ivermectin for cancer. 
And if you have yet to do so, click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.